Hi guys, I wanted to walk through a prototyping process that uh, is similar to the lab we're doing this week. Uh, we have a sensor that produces a voltage and we're using some resistors to set up a bunch of voltages that we're going to use to compare to that guy. Um, and so I, uh, I just wanted to make some suggestions about how you approach prototyping because I, I see a lot of uh, wanting to build everything at once and then try to figure out why it doesn't work after everything's put together. And it turns out when you're prototyping circuits, or uh, really, if you're writing code, you're doing any kind of a complicated problem, it always pays to try to break it down into small pieces and just build the smallest possible piece you can build and validate that that tiny piece of the big puzzle works before you move on to the next piece. So here's where the sensors live in uh, Tinkercad. And um, you'll see there's the photoresistor we used for this, this lab. Uh, I mean, the in-class activity. There's also a photodiode and a flux sensor. Um, a flex sensor, excuse me. So let's, let's take a look at that one. So here I have a... Uh, sometimes this would be also called a... Uh, Let's see, strain gauge, I think, is what they sometimes call these guys. So it measures flex. So let's go ahead and switch this to resistance mode, and let's see what we get for resistance. So it's about 30,000 ohms. Um, and, oh, if I bend it, I see. I can drag it up and down and bend it. Now we're getting uh, 163,000, 30,000. So it's in the neighborhood of say 150, 160 to uh, 30,000 ohms. So if I want to make this part of a voltage divider that I check with a comparator, I'll need to have a resistance in the other part of the divider that's somewhere in the middle of that range, 30 to 160. So let's say uh, about 100,000 ohms. So I'll go ahead and delete this guy and put this guy in my circuit. And let's... Uh, Oopsie, I don't know why that happened. Okay. Okay, so we'll put that guy there. Make this guy jump between here and say here. And then I'm going to... Uh, Copy these guys down here like that. No, see, that didn't work. Okay. So now I should have a voltage divider here, but this resistance is only 1,000 ohms. I want to be more like 100,000 ohms because I want to be able to uh, get a voltage that goes up and down through the midpoint of the range, whatever the range is. Let's see, what do I want? That's going to be 5 volts, I guess, here. Let's get another... Um, did I get rid of the I guess I got rid of the voltmeter. Let's get another one here to measure voltage. Oopsie. There we go. And then let's uh, hook this guy between ground and, say, between this junction in my voltage divider. And I'll go ahead and run the simulation. And we'll see. Right now it's 1 volt. And then as I bend this thing... There we go, it's 3 volts. It's going to go through 2.5 volts. 2.5 volts is the middle of the range. Right? So that, that makes sense. So now I'm going through the middle. Now, <clears throat> it, the idea is you build a little bit, and then you test it. So let's see, where do I want to have the comparator switch? So let's say I want to switch around 2 volts. So that's, uh, what is that here? That's about 85 degrees of bend, okay? So I need another divider now that's going to uh, produce a voltage of 2 volts. So how do I do that? Well, I need two resistors again. So we'll put one here. We'll put one here. If I want the voltage in between the two. Let's say make a junction there. If I want the voltage between the two to be 2 volts, I've got a v VCC of 5 volts. I want this resistance to be 2 fifths. So easiest way to do that is just to 
make this 3k, make this guy 2k, and then I've got a voltage here that should be 2 volts. So let's check it. Again, how do I check it? Well, I get a voltmeter out. The idea is you, you don't just build something and then assume it works. You build something and then you test. Does it work? And if it does, great. If it doesn't, then you fix it. But you know, at least you know at that point uh, what it is you're fixing. So now I've got 2 volts. Perfect. That means that worked, right? So uh, I can kill this guy. So let's just delete these connections. And now I need a comparator. So what do I do? I get a comparator here. Uh, that's a... Where are the comparators here? Here we go. 393. All right, beautiful. So 393, what does it need? It has output 1, input 1 minus, input 1 plus. It's got ground. So I'm going to go ahead and type ground here. Then over here I got power. So let's go ahead and connect power here. <clears throat> I want the two uh, inputs. Let's see, what have I got here? This is out 2, 2 minus, 2 plus. So I'll just put one of these guys in 2 minus, put the other one into 2 plus, and then the output, I'll just grab a uh, resistor, right? I need, uh, let's make an LED light, so I'll grab an LED. There's an LED. And uh, I, there's the anode, there's the cathode. So the cathode's going to connect to ground. The anode's going to connect to uh, a resistor, a current limiting resistor. I think we decided for 5 volts, it's about a 2 volt LED, that we need about a 300 ohm resistor. Not 300,000 ohms, 300 ohms. Okay. And then if we run that thing, we should see the LED light up. Beautiful. So uh, what I want to do is to have the LED, the connection to ground, be switched by the comparator. So I'll use the output of the comparator to control that switch. So grab this guy, move it up here to the output of the comparator. Boom. Start the simulation. And now as I bend this thing up and down, when it goes through 2 volts, the LED is going to turn on and off. Notice the current draw, um, when, the, when the thing's not flexed, the current is about 1.7 milliamps. As soon as the uh, LED turns on, I get an extra 10 milliamps. So that, that's also consistent with my uh, current limiting resistor here. We dialed it, or we set it to be about 10 milliamps. So 300 ohms works, works well for that. And that's the idea. What if I wanted it to have the other sense? What if I wanted it to be on when the thing was not flexed? and off when it was flexed. Well, that means I've got the polarity backwards here for these guys. So let's hook them up the other way instead of, well, now I don't remember how I had it hooked up. Let's see, let's try this. Turn on the simulation. And now it should turn on, wait. Uh, hang on, oh, I got those up. Mm. I did not plug them in correctly. Okay, boom, boom. This guy will make here. This guy will put here. Now start the simulation. And now when I bend it, it turns on. When I unbend it, it turns off. So I'm going to have the opposite polarity. So the idea is you can just you can switch the behavior by simply moving. Stop the simulation. You can just swap these guys. So this one I can put here. This one I can put here, and now it should have the opposite behavior. Uh, there we go. Make sure I did that right. Now, it turns off when I bend it on when I unbend it. So by swapping the plus and the minus, you'll get the inverted behavior, whatever that is. Okay. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, we'll see you next time.